Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be traveling beyond the confines of the UK and taking a look at the global wizarding community. In the Harry Potter books and films, we're more or less confined to a couple of places within the UK, and that was our primary introduction to the wizarding world. However, when the Fantastic Beasts films came out, the Wizarding World as we know it began expanding, showing us new countries and magical places. In fact, much of the Fantastic Beasts films so far have taken place in America and France, with the next installment bringing us all over the place. With our ever-growing knowledge of other Wizarding countries, I find it particularly interesting how the Wizarding culture differs from place to place and in today's video, I'm going to be honing in on one particular aspect of that culture, the school system. Because you see, Hogwarts, though granted the potentially biased honour of the world's greatest magic school, isn't the only option for witches and wizards around the globe. Today, I want to open your eyes to the rest of them, at least the ones we know about, anyway. As it turns out, there are 11 established wizarding schools in total. At least 11 that are officially registered with the International Confederation of Wizards, the primary governing body. There are others, but they aren't as official or regulated, and we don't know much about those ones. Now, I know what you might be thinking. 11 schools? For the whole world? That's it? Well, Pottermore has a fair explanation for this. Affairs relating to magical schooling are handled by the Educational Office of the International Confederation of Wizards, who can direct people to their nearest school. However, the majority of magical communities choose to homeschool young witches and wizards, which is why there are so few schools in comparison to the number of countries. Alternatively, some witches and wizards might take correspondence courses, which may prove a cheaper option in countries that are too small to have their own school. Okay, so there are 11 official wizarding schools, a few unofficial schools, and a significant population of homeschooled students. Now there's just one thing left to answer. What are these 11 schools? Which countries are they in? How do they differ from Hogwarts? Let's get into it. Castello Bruxu. I'm going to kick things off with Castello Bruxu, mainly as it's this school that we should expect to see in the upcoming Fantastic Beasts film, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Castello Bruxu is a Brazilian wizarding school that's located amid the Amazon rainforest in northern Brazil, and it's home to students from all over South America. The school itself is just as old as Hogwarts, at least according to Pottermore, and was founded 500 years before colonization. The physical structure of the school forms an imposing square of golden rock that resembles a temple, but to muggle eyes, the school is simply a pile of ruins, protected by enchantments much like Hogwarts. According to Pottermore, protecting the school grounds are Capora, small and furry, mischievous spirit beings that watch over the students and creatures within the forest surrounding the school. Like Hogwarts, the South American student body of Castelo Bruxu wear a uniform. However, their uniform can be easily identified by the bright green robes outlined with patterns, including yellow lines, red rings, and blue triangles. It has also been expressed that the students of the school are particularly versed in the subjects of herbology and magizoology. We don't know for sure if the school is going to be in the Fantastic Beasts franchise, but we do know that Armando Dippet, the Hogwarts headmaster preceding Dumbledore, meets with the headmistress of Castelo Bruxu, Benedita Durado, sometime in the 20th century, which could potentially overlap with the film timeline. Koldov Stvorietz Koldov Stvorietz is the Wizarding School of Russia and one of 11 schools registered with the International Confederation of Wizards. The name comes from the Russian words Koldovstvo, meaning witchcraft, and Tvarietz, which means creator. If we overlap the two words, they form a portmanteau, which means the creator of magic. Makes sense for a wizarding school. There isn't much information available out there on the school, and this is because JK Rowling, despite including it in the official list of wizarding schools, decided not to publish much additional information on this particular academic institution. However, this lack of information has forced fans to get exceptionally creative, which has resulted in the following fan-published and unofficial school details, including the school being located on a hidden section of Lake Ladoga, a freshwater lake located in northwestern Russia, the school having a protective barrier surrounding it, 
and the school having a house system, with houses instead being referred to as courts that are represented by coral, pink, turquoise, and amber. The only canon information that we have on Koldov Stvoryets is that they have their own version of Quidditch, where instead of flying on brooms, they fly on entire uprooted trees. Durmstrang Durmstrang, which you've probably heard of before, think Goblet of Fire, bears the darkest reputation of all wizarding schools, and was once home to infamous dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald before he was expelled for experimenting with twisted magic. Aside from students and staff of the school, no one knows exactly where Durmstrang is, other than that it's located somewhere in the far north of Europe. This is because visitors of the school must comply with having memory charms performed on them in order to erase their knowledge of how they arrived there. According to Pottermore, visitors of the school speak of vast, sprawling grounds with many stunning views, not least of the great, dark, spectral ship that is moored on a mountain lake behind the school, from which students dive in summertime. Durmstrang was originally founded during the Middle Ages by a Bulgarian witch named Narida Volkanova. She successfully operated the school until her mysterious death, at which point she was succeeded by Harfeng Munter, a wizard who established the school's reputation for its emphasis on martial magic. Later in the school's future, Dark Wizard and former Death Eater Igor Karkaroff became headmaster of the school, at which point he promoted a culture of fear and intimidation, further contributing to the school's dark reputation. Upon Karkaroff's assumption of power, many parents withdrew their students from the school. The students of Durmstrang wore fur cloaks, fur hats, and blood-red robes. Ilvermorny In 2016, J.K. Rowling published a lengthy origin story for Ilvermorny School, North America's school of witchcraft and wizardry. If you want to know the whole thing, check out my video in the pinned comment. As for now, I'm just going to be providing a brief summary. Ilvermorny was founded in the early 17th century by Isolt Sayer, an Irish pureblood witch, the only child and daughter of William and Rhiannach Sayer, and the wife of James Stewart. Together with her husband, they founded Ilvermorny School and established its four houses, Thunderbird, Wampus, Horned Serpent, and Pukwudgie. Ilvermorny can be described as follows. The Great North American School of Magic was founded in the 17th century. It stands at the highest peak of Mount Greylock, where it is concealed from non-magic gaze by a variety of powerful enchantments, which sometimes manifest in a wreath of misty cloud. The school started as Isolt and James simply teaching their adopted children in a small cottage, but over the years their operation began to grow, eventually becoming a fully-fledged educational institution. Per Pottermore, Ilvermorny's reputation continued to increase over the years, and it eventually became a boarding school, taking in students from across North America. More teachers were hired to meet the demand, and the house was expanded to a castle. By the 19th century, it had gained an international reputation, and by the 1920s, it was considered one of the greatest wizarding schools in the world. The current head teacher of Ilvermorny is Agilbert Fontaine, the direct descendant of one of the twelve original Makusa Auras. Isolt and James both lived to be over 100. They had seen the cottage of Ilvermorny become a granite castle, and they died in the knowledge that their school was now so famous that magical families all over North America were clamoring to educate their children there. They had hired staff, they had built dormitories, they had concealed their school from no magis by clever enchantments. In short, the girl who had dreamed of attending Hogwarts had helped found the North American equivalent. Beaubaton Beaubaton Academy of Magic was founded sometime in the 13th century by an unknown witch or wizard. The school can be found somewhere in the Pyrenees Mountains of southern France, and is home to witches and wizards of many different nationalities. The school itself is said to be stunning in nature, complete with majestic gardens and a magical fountain which is said to possess healing and beautifying properties. Some speculate that part of the school's impressive physical appearance can be attributed to donations from one of its former pupils, Nicola Flamel, also known as the creator of the Philosopher's Stone. The school's coat of arms isn't so bad to look at either, with two golden ones crossed over one another, firing three stars. You should already know a little about Beaubaton, 
as it's referenced in the Harry Potter books quite a bit, particularly in the Goblet of Fire where they compete against Hogwarts and Durmstrang in the Triwizard Tournament. We also have a pretty good grasp of the students, as Fleur de la Cour ends up being a recurring character. The school uniform for Beaubaton is comprised of pale blue robes made of fine silk, along with a pale blue hat, and the current headmistress for Beaubaton is none other than Madame Olympe Maxime, also known as Hagrid's love interest, a half-giant witch who seems to maintain quite a good relationship with the student body. Mahutu Koro Mahutu Koro is the Japanese school of magic, located on the topmost point of the volcanic island of Manima Iwo Jima. It's unknown when exactly the school was founded, but many speculate that it is one of the oldest wizarding schools, only described as ancient. This ancient Japanese school has the smallest student body of the 11 great wizarding schools and takes students from the age of 7, although they do not board until they are 11. While day students, wizarding children are flown back and forth to their homes every day on the backs of a flock of giant storm petrels. The ornate and exquisite palace of Mahutu Koro is made of mutton fat jade and stands on the topmost point of the uninhabited, or so muggles think, volcanic island of Minami Iwo Jima. In my opinion, Mahutu Koro has the most interesting dress code of all the schools, as the colors, size of the robes they wear are dynamic in nature. This is described on Pottermore. Students are presented with enchanted robes when they arrive, which grow in size as they do, and which gradually change color as the learning of their wearer increases, beginning a faint pink color and becoming, if top grades are achieved in every magical subject, gold. If the robes turn white, this is an indication that the student has betrayed the Japanese wizard's code and adopted illegal practices, which in Europe we call dark magic, or broken the international statute of secrecy. To turn white is a terrible disgrace, which results in instant expulsion from the school and a trial at the Japanese Ministry for Magic. Students of Mahoto Koro typically used ones crafted out of cherry wood, and the school itself is known for its impressive academic prowess, as well as its outstanding reputation for Quidditch. Interestingly, even with a small student body, this is the only known school in Asia, which could suggest that some Asian witches and wizards also attend Koldov Stvoryets in Russia. Wagadu Wagadu is a wizarding school located in what are called the Mountains of the Moon, an ancient term referring to the Rwenzori Mountains of Uganda, found at the source of the Nile River. The school, located in the mountain range, has been described as a stunning edifice carved out of the mountainside, shrouded in mist so that it sometimes appeared simply to float in midair. The exact founding year of the school is unknown, however we do know that the school has been around for about 1000 years, making it similar in age to Hogwarts. Despite many other smaller wizarding schools popping up all over Africa over the centuries, it has been expressed that Wagadu is the only one to withstand the test of time, making it the largest wizarding school in Africa, and even the world. Students receive notice that they have gained entrance at Wagadu from dream messengers, sent by the headmaster or headmistress of the day. The dream messenger will appear to the children as they sleep and will leave a token, usually an inscribed stone, which is found in the child's hand on waking. No other school employs this method of pupil selection. The students of Wagadu are said to be particularly versed in the areas of astronomy, alchemy, self-transfiguration, and wandless magic. As the wand was primarily a European invention, witches and wizards of Africa learned to channel their magic without any kind of instrument. Furthermore, it has been expressed that the students of Wagadu are able to become an Amegai at an exceedingly young age, which is especially impressive if we consider that becoming an Animagus is very rare in the UK. Not much is known about the school's uniforms or whether any kind of house system is used. Hogwarts Hogwarts, have you heard of it? Was founded at some point during the 10th century. It was built hidden off somewhere in the Scottish Highlands. The exact location is never actually revealed, and this was because the 10th century was a time of hardship for witches and wizards. During this time, every day, witches and wizards were being persecuted by muggles, who were intensely hostile when it came to witnessing sources of magic. In order to further protect the staff, students, and school itself, additional precautions were made in the form of charms. 
helping to further conceal the school from muggle trespassers. If a muggle were to just happen to stumble upon the school grounds, they would only see ruins and signs warning them to stay away. Hogwarts was founded when four 10th century witches and wizards got together and decided that they had, in the Sorting Hat's own words, the selfsame yearning to make the world's best magic school. These founders were Godric Gryffindor, Rowena Ravenclaw, Salazar Slytherin, and Helga Hufflepuff. Thus, Hogwarts was born. The name Hogwarts actually came from founder Rowena Ravenclaw, who had a dream where a warty hog led her to a cliff by a lake. It's also been speculated that this is how they chose a location for the school as well. After its establishment, like with any institution, a crest was formed for Hogwarts, emblazoned upon the school crest are the words Draco Dormian Nanquam Titulandus, which roughly translates to Never Tickle a Sleeping Dragon. After the founders founded the school, they decided that they would each create and head their own house, which would represent a personality trait and skill that they wanted to nurture. And it just so happened that despite being close friends, each founder happened to value very different things, which created quite an interesting and diverse array of students at the school. Gryffindor students embodied bravery and chivalry, Ravenclaw intelligence and wit, Hufflepuff loyalty and fair play, and Slytherin the values of being sly and cunning. And that's it for the named wizarding schools. I know that I said that there were 11 official wizarding schools, and there are, but these are the only ones that we have any information on. According to Pottermore, there is an Australian wizarding school, which we have no information on, and two more wizarding schools at undisclosed locations. Maybe we'll get this information in the future. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Did you learn much about these other wizarding schools? Which school do you live closest to? Which school would you attend if you had a choice? Leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.